My name is Robert Walker. I am very thankful for you for letting me present here at um, your conference. I'm sorry I can't be there. Um, as you can tell by my accent, I'm I'm not from around here. I'm in the UK, so it's um, probably the middle of the night now. Um, but yes, I run a small design studio called A Regular Company, or IACO for short. Um, it's the art and design practice concerned with the juncture of experience and information and looking at what things like blockchain do for uh, the aesthetic view of the world. Um, we uh, have historically done a lot of comms for banks and so on, so lots of snazzy animations explaining finance to people. Um, we won the Future of Money Award, uh, Future Money Design Award even, uh, for this sort of speculative cryptocurrency called Effective Accounts. Uh, this was a uh, live Poloniex order books uh, turned into a um, landscape in Unity. Uh, just for a German uh, design art show thing. Uh, this was in Creators Project as a trading bot that sort of did sort of mad uh, views of ancient language and lost um, lost knowledge. Uh, currently, I'm uh, helping with these people provenance. Uh, some of you may have heard of them. They're um, they use blockchains to add transparency to su supply chains. Uh, they didn't do a token sale. They actually um, raised all their money from uh, C investing. So, um, but they have sort of real clients and a real product, um, which is good fun. So uh, here we are, Politia here. Um, the main brief, obviously, is to discover alternative uses for Politia. Um, and we sort of set ourselves a sub-brief of uh, what use case can move decentralized consensus out of the digital world into solving physical real-world problems experienced by the public, uh, normal people who don't understand all this stuff. Um, this is normal people in a normal place uh, in London. And this is apparently what it will look like, um, although only if you have access to these wonderful sales brochures of the development that is being built and these sales brochures with their glossy renderings of a, an imagined future only available to from the Savills who are a very high-end estate agent Savills Hong Kong website so the real people who actually live in this environment have no idea of this the only people who do are investors in the Far East so you can see the breakdown of the problem. Um, there are massive permanent changes going on in the built environment, um, particularly in London, uh, I'm sure in many other places. Uh, the local community are generally unaware of them before they start happening, and there is a lack of uh, ensuing uh, lack of local lack of trust in local government and developers as to listen and genuinely consider the community's feedback and lives generally. Um, However, there's an opportunity because there is an, an on online portal where you can view planning applications. There is obviously a legally required consultation phase. Usually the consultations are two hourly uh, sort of meetings on wet Wednesday evenings that no one knows happens and no one goes to. Um, and obviously the architects have detailed 3D models of everything that they're building. So. Um, this is what it looks like when you try and find these things on the local government website. It's not exactly an easy way of finding out what's going on around you. Um, and these are what the architectures, architect's pictures look like once you dig down into the planning website and into the planning documents, which aren't exactly uh, accessible ways of visualising what's going to happen to, the, to your built environment. So, um, we proposed using given that Plutio already uses React, we could um, build a React Native client so people can use it on their phones. And we get the architects to export 3D models. We put them on the Plutio chain, and then they are viewable in AR in situ, and people's comments are attached to the blockchain, and they are available in situ. So walking around town, you'll be able to see what's going on. And once the proposal expires, um, everything is packaged up and sent off to the local planning board, and they've got no excuse for not looking at it or not knowing that people said these things.
Um, here we go, rough user interfaces. This is it on top of the live view. And there's obviously a map view, so you can see um, what's going on near you. Um, the idea is that anyone could comment on any development, but you'd have to be within a certain radius uh, of a geolocation of the building, of the development. So it is still radically open to anyone using the system, but you know you can't just spam comments from across the world about something you're not physically close to. Uh, yes, here's a, here's a lady sort of looking up at the world and seeing these, seeing this virtual stuff. Uh, so this is roughly how it works. Uh, the plan, if you just start from the sort of top left-ish, the planning proposal is submitted onto the chain, the community members view, and then write their comments back to the chain. Um, they then keep doing this until there's a big log of comments. When the proposal expires, all the comments are packaged up, sent off to the planning authorities. They then either approve or send it back to um, the architects and developers for revision and the system starts again. Uh, here's a uh, dummy of the actual JSON files. So the proposal of the index MD contains all the text. Um, there's a little meta JSON which will just control, hold the, um, the length of the proposal and the geolocation, the longitude and latitude. And then the 3D models are exported as Calada, which is an XML based um, markup language for uh, holding 3D models and then a sequence of PNGs for the textures. Um, now the question is who's going to use this? Uh, you can see there's not uh, the developers and architects, it sounds like a lot of hard work. Currently they sort of benefit from a system where the community isn't really engaged. However, um, there was a task force a couple of years ago um, run by the UK government into how they solve the housing crisis because we're currently underbuilding houses by 200,000 each year, um, which is a problem, as you can imagine. And the guys who wrote the response paper, this chap called Alistair Parvin, they highlighted the citizen sector. Um, now, the citizen sector is what has always existed, which is people building their own homes. Um, I, and um, uh, building groups, basically co-housings, they're known um, in Anglophone world and these sort of quasi uh, community company things, uh, given their technical names, CLTs and CICs. I mean, um, so th these are people who obviously build not for speculative purposes. So, uh, however, because they're not doing it for a business, they are there are certain barriers and certain different qualities to them. They are not used to what they're doing, so they're not professional. There's lots of people all wanting to be heard, so they have high communication overheads, and there's a lack of trust in the process because they don't really understand the process. Um, however, this is exactly where our consensus systems can come in and save the day. And uh, as has been said by in this report by the government, Digital tools and open data can be used to make complex multi-stakeholder processes more transparent, more replicable, less bureaucratic and simpler for everyone involved. Um, this sounds exactly like what blockchain should be trying to do and particularly what Decred's take on governance um, is doing. So um, I hope you like this example of taking Decred out of the internet and into the world. Um, thanks very much. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.